Is that okay, so so my projects, it was uh, it's kind of just an ex exploration of style transfer. I wasn't really pushing any boundaries or anything. I was just generating thousands of images and trying to find cool and novel uh, styles. So first, what is style transfer? Uh, it's the idea of transferring the style of one image onto the content of another image. And uh, it was first uh, published in the paper uh, Neural Algorithm of Artistic Style by Gaddis et al. in 2016. And so this example on the right is straight from that paper. Um, so it's a street in Germany, and they transferred the Van Gogh Starry Night style onto it. Um, so this is kind of an example of, of what I was going for. And so this, uh, it makes use of a pre-trained image classifying convolutional neural network, the VGG19, which is a well-known and used one. And it strips out, the network that I'm using strips out some of the layers of that classifier and then uses those to apply the style. So first, uh, here's our first potentially copyrighted image of Gandalf. Um, <laughs> but uh, what defines the content of an image? And that's basically just the edges of the things in the image. Um, so similar to like the how image classification works, they look at the images and then figure out, or sorry, look at the edges and kind of figure out what's going from there. Um, the content of each of these images is really just, yeah, these this collection of edges. So what defines the style? That one's a bit more complicated. Um, and again, thanks to Gaddis et al. and also to TensorFlow for providing this function that does exactly this gram matrix. So it's basically the means and correlations across all the different feature maps. You take the outer product of these feature vectors with itself at each point, and then take the average of that over all the points. And somehow that is the style. <laughs> so I will do a quick little live demonstration where I will transfer this picture of me into the Starry Night style. So it's right here. So it starts and then slowly it will get converted into Starry Night. It's kind of interesting because it starts out kind of green and yellow, which is not really the colors in Starry Night. And then over time, it's getting more blue and darker as it goes. Um, and so it's it's kind of a weird form of machine learning. It's not really supervised or unsupervised. It's kind of just like taking the information out of those uh, layers from the VGG19 and applying it to the content over a course of these steps. And about a thousand steps looks good. Um, that was, again, just based on the, the Gaddis et al. and the TensorFlow stuff I was working from. And fewer steps, like if, you, if I stopped at 500, it wouldn't look quite as good. And I tried going up to like 5,000, and it didn't look much better than 1,000. So I let it stop at 1,000. So so does that mean if you let it run forever, you just end up with the, the same? The, I, th I think so. Yeah, it would have eventually it would just become Starry Night, I think, like over millions of iterations. Um, but like I said, 1,000 has been pretty good. It, 3,000 just looks a little worse sometimes, so it it, it really depends. Um, is, that, is that what took like three minutes on Xena? Yep, yeah, three and a half minutes on Xena. Oh, wrong one, where's, here we go. So um, yeah, so this is the math camp that I talked a little bit about. It was APS's first Math Discovery Academy for rising seventh graders, and I got to teach the Python course. And so it was there during that class when I was, trying to think of cool things, you know, that advanced Python things. I was like, oh, machine learning, style transfer. And then I started playing around with it. So I came with this project and asked all the kids to help me. And I was the one is like, hey, you guys give me some images. I'll make every single one of them in the style of every single other one. And they I did not expect them to send me 200 photos. I expected about, you know, maybe a couple from each kid. But one kid, the one with the thumbs up and the, the laptop there in the upper right, he he sent me like 70 photos himself. So <laughs> he was super excited about this whole project. So Jake, that photo in the corner of like hundreds yes. of kids? I yes. That's like not all the kids you're teaching. No, that's the full camp. Okay, okay, all right. How many students? Yeah, that was the full camp. And I only taught probably 15 to 20 of them total. Cool. And like I said, they, they sent me way more photos than I expected. So... 200 images in the style of all the others. That's 200 squared, which is 40,000 images. And this is before I was on Condo. So I was just using Xena and I was like, oh gosh, this is going to take forever. I'll never be able to finish this before the end of the camp. 
I didn't. I still still didn't even generate all 40,000. Um, what I did is I just took some of them and generated them in all 200 styles and then started looking through those to find the styles that were interesting. And then I went through the full list in those interesting styles. Um, and I also added 40 images of my own, like including that picture of me, picture of some of my cats, uh, and a few other photos that are classically used in style transfer, just to kind of see if, if what I was doing was any different um, to that. So I did some benchmarking. Uh, and this is one of the combinations specifically requested by one of the kids. He said, I want SpongeBob in this Van Gogh painting style. And so here we go, Van Gogh SpongeBob. Or what did he, he call it? Like Van Bob Sponge Pants, I think he called it. Um, but yes, yeah, so I ran this same combination on four different queues. On the Wheeler queue, just using a single CPU took 3.5 hours. Xena on a single GPU took 3.5 minutes, so a lot faster. And then uh, a single CPU on the general queue of Hopper is 1.25 hours. And then Hopper's condo queue with the GPU is 12 seconds. So you're probably clearly, so I'll take credit. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, uh, the Hopper queue is the way to go for this kind of image processing, which is which is cool. So thank uh -huh. you to Matthew for giving me access to it, because then I generated thousands and thousands of images over the course of the last few weeks. Yeah. So thank you for benchmarking it, <laughs> and thank you yeah. all for proving that TensorFlow runs on hoppers. You know, it's already useful for that Prince ticket. So yeah, great. That's true. <laughs> this is really cool. So now I'll get into just showing off the images. Uh, the This is one that I expected to be a good style. It's used classically in a lot of style transfer. So here's Van Gogh's motorcycle, uh, a John Constable painting. I forget the name of the cathedral. But then if Van Gogh had painted it, kind of interesting, I like mixing famous uh, painters' styles onto each other is kind of an interesting idea. Uh, here's the Mona Lisa in the Starry Night style, again, kind of going that same idea. Kind of made her eyes a little weird. Um, Lord of the Rings. I, I told the kids that I was listening to the Lord of the Rings audiobooks, which they re released them and they are read by Andy Serkis, who plays uh, Gollum and Smeagol in the movies. And his voice acting is amazing for the books. So I highly recommend those audiobooks if you're looking for that. Um, but here's, yeah, here's Starry Night Balrog, which is kind of cool. It's like a blue, a blue fiery version instead of the red fire. Uh, again, like I said, I told the kids I was listening to those books. They gave me lots of Lord of the Rings photos. So here's Frodo in Starry Night style. Um, and then this is a picture of the balloon glow in the Starry Night style. Oh, oh, sorry, I, I, you went too fast over the yeah. photo. Okay, all right. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, it's okay. This one's kind of cool. I like the... His eyes also get a little weird. The Starry Night eyes are interesting. because I think he tries to turn them into the stars from the image. Um, anyway, okay. So here's the balloon glow in the Starry Night style, which... I thought was really cool. So that inspired me to make a video. I'll pull it up where I started with this video of the balloon glow. And then I stripped it down to every single uh, frame, converted all those frames into the Starry Night style. Hold on. Are, then... you showing, are you showing a video right now, Jake? Oh, yes. Can you not see it? I cannot, okay. I cannot see it. All I see is your web browser. Oh. Uh, here, let me PowerPoint, yeah. stop oh, sharing and reshare my entire screen, maybe. Okay, can you see this now? Or do you see just the screen still? Yes. There it is, there it is. Okay, so here's the here's the raw footage. So it's just a video of some people at the Balloon Glow, right, here in Albuquerque. And then, like I said, I stripped it down into every frame and then converted it into Starry Night. And so now you get this weird... Van Gogh dreamlike version of the balloon glow, which kind of, it's just kind of like uh, what's that, the technique rotoscoping, I guess, where you take each frame of, an, of, a, of a video and hand paint over them, but instead of hand painting it, it's style transfer, so it's kind of cool. Okay, back to the slides. Uh, oh, yeah, this is the videos, it wasn't going to load, so that's why I showed them the other way. Oh, that one loaded. Interesting. Okay, so then the kids also love Pokemon. So here's just four Pokemon <laughs> in the style of uh, Van Gogh. Uh, another good expected style is a Pete Montreon uh, image, a French artist. So here's Bilbo in that style, Disneyland, so that kind of like a cool little building block style castle. 
a uh, picture of a fried egg. I thought one was really cool. Gimli. Uh, this is a Monet painting in the Mondrian style. It's kind of a cool little take on that one. Um, okay, and then another good style that people classically use in style transfer is this Picasso Las Meninas, which is kind of meta because it's already a painting. It's his version of another painting. There's another Las Meninas, like classical Renaissance painting, and this is his version of it. So now it's a an image in the style of an image in the style of an image, I guess. <laughs> um, and yeah, so balloon glow version of that. This cool picture of a windmill and some flowers. And then here's a portrait of Picasso himself. So here's Picasso in, in a Picasso style. Which, this one's kind of interesting because it didn't didn't do a lot to like his arm, for example, in the foreground and his forehead, but like the background really got got morphed, which is cool. Um, this cool picture of a puffer fish. I thought that was a really interesting uh, Picasso painting. <laughs> and then here's Starry Night in this style, so kind of a, a little twist changes the colors a bit. Okay, and then now we're getting into the unexpectedly cool styles, and these are the ones that I did not, I did not think that using the Balrog as a style image was going to be really cool. And sure enough, it made lots of cool stuff. So here's this helicopter. It now looks like it's a firefighter helicopter, you know, flying over a fire. This flaming axolotl, which is pretty cool, and even like turned the ground. My daughter like... would love that. <laughs> like, like, turned the ground into like cracked mud. Sending that slide. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I will. Sure, that was my kid. <laughs> um, yeah, it, like, it took the cracked bridge and just put that on the ground. So that was kind of cool here. Um, and then flaming Starry Night. So I, instead of Starry Night Balrog, we got Balrog Starry Night. No, yeah, whatever. I did the other combo earlier, and now here's this this combo. Uh, here's a picture of my kitty. My wife does not like this photo because she thinks I set the cats on fire, but I think it's a fun one because she looks cool. <laughs> Can you do the reverse and make some sort of furry Balrog? Balrog? Uh, so a lot of images do not work well as styles and they just generate noisy looking images. <laughs> so this picture of my cat Sylvie was one of those images that did not work well as a style, but worked pretty well as a content. And that's why I was surprised with the Balrog because somehow the Balrog worked well for both. Um, here's an Albuquerque uh, skyline set on fire, and then another one. And then I, when I showed the kids this, they loved it so much that, of course, I made another video. So let's see. Started with this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just a nice little skyline. You know, our our peaceful city, not on fire. It looks great. Um, and like I said, the kids love that image so much that they asked me to make a video like this, where I then took these nice, calm, sweeping skylines and uh, set it ablaze. And now it's if the Santias were volcanoes and constantly erupting, like right there, that, oh, I went too far. That on the right is part of the Santias. So it just straight up turned the Sandias into volcanoes, which I thought was kind of cool. That shot is not as great, but some of these are kind of cool. Yeah, it's just the kids wanted to see the city burn, so I, I gave them what they wanted. <laughs> How old are these kids? These are 13? Uh, rising seventh graders. So yeah. uh, 13, Probably I guess, 13. 12 or 13. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah, that was, they liked that one a lot. It was fun. Um, again, these videos and want to work in the slides. Okay, another cool unexpected style was this image of lasers. So here's laser Balrog, which is kind of fun. Uh, laser balloon glow, which gives it a whole new vibe, kind of like a rave balloon glow, um, which is kind of fun. This cool painting, or not painting, picture of an elk at a sunrise. Um, I just I just really like the way that the some of the uh, like the lower part of the image wasn't darkened because of the because of the sunrise of the of the raw image, so that's kind of cool. Uh, picture of a mountain, again, kind of just like I said, I, I generated twenty thousand images and I looked at a lot, so there's a lot of bad laser images and a few that were pretty cool. Um, here's a Pokemon, 
And this one is particularly interesting because he's got these little like ear antenna. And in the stylized image, it detached them from his head. It just cut them off and turned them into lasers. So now he's kind of a little worm instead of a tadpole, I guess. Um, that's some image of these rainbow blocks that the kids provided me. So here's an image of my wife at the balloon fiesta. And I thought it was a cool version of her because it didn't blockify her, but it really blockified the background. So it's kind of kind of interesting. And then a Pokemon and the block style. That this one's kind of cool. Looks kind of like uh, paint stained glass mosaic windows or something like that. Kids love their tractors. So I got a few tractor photos. Here's a dump truck in the rainbow style. And I, I was teaching in Python, so they thought it'd be funny to send me the Python logo. And it looks pretty cool in this mosaic style. And then here's an actual mosaic image, because this one looks like mosaics. But this is an actual mosaic uh, tile in Italy. And it, it just made all of the images look kind of like cracked mud, which I thought was kind of cool. So there's Albuquerque. Here's this cat. Oh, that one's pretty cool. It's not my cat. It's just some cat kids sent me. I don't know. Uh, here's a tree. That one looks kind of cool. I, I, I really like the way it looks like cracked mud to me for some reason. I, I, that's why I stuck with the style. It's pretty cool. Here's some lemons. OK, and then this is the final unexpected cool style that I'll show off. And it's just a picture of Pokemon. It's a Girantina is the Pokemon. And it, it kind of made everything look like a painted version of itself. So here's this cool bird as if it was painted instead of taking a picture. Here's the creation of Adam as the Giarantina style. And it, uh, the cracks in the back of the painting make it look like it's on like uh, wrinkled paper. So it looks like someone painted this on a piece of paper and then crumbled it up and then uncrumbled it. And now that's that's the result. Um, here's Elrond from Lord of the Rings. Again, it kind of just looks cool in this style. Uh, Last Supper. Again, that same kind of thing where it looks, the table kind of looks like folded papers. Looks like someone crumbled up the, the image and then uncrumbled it. And then Van Gogh's self-portrait in this style. I thought it was kind of interesting. And then lastly, this picture of roses. I thought it was really interesting that it started out as very red and green and then turned out kind of like pink and blue in the end. Uh, but it's still very clearly roses and just looks like a painting now, which is kind of cool. Um, so then I got this bonus or this other thing I've been doing called toy photography, where I've got these six inch action figures posed up in my backyard, my wife's really high quality camera. So I took this picture and then I threw it into Photoshop. So I removed the plastic stand holding up the stormtrooper and added the lightsaber effect. So you can kind of go back and forth. And then I threw it into Van Gogh style. And so now it's Van Gogh, Luke Skywalker using the force, which is kind of cool. And I did the same thing, another raw image added some lightsaber effects, threw it in the Balrog style, and now there's a lightsaber battle on Mustafar, I guess, some lava planet. Um, yeah, and that's it. So thanks for listening. What's the camera set up? Uh, I have no clue. It's my wife's camera. I, I should ask her. <laughs> OK. <laughs> that, that was really fun. Thank you. And, I, and it, so many of those images, I was like, where can I, where can I buy that? Right? That's, yeah. I, I showed my sister-in-law. She's like, oh, what app is this? And I was like, oh, that's an idea. And then I looked at the app store, and there's dozens of style transfer apps already. So too late to the ballgame for that one. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, was, it was a pretty cool project. Like I said, I generated, I think, 20,000 images. Here we can see. Uh, can you can you show us a, like a random one that that you know so we get an idea of what not good looks like? Yeah, here I can just pull up. I mean, does any yeah anything? Like here's okay, here's all the versions of my cat. I'll pull this up. So here's that's in the style of the Albuquerque skyline. So you can see it's kind of putting the buildings on her and the clouds. Not very good. Other Albuquerque skyline. That's picture cool. of some aliens. That one, yeah, that one's kind of cool. See, that one's terrible. It's a picture of a Pokemon. It kind of just made the cat cross-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> Makes her look <laughs> a little interesting. Uh, yeah, see, a lot of, like, I, I would just kind of scroll through. I like the fiery cat, but all right. Yeah, there's, let's see, Bal that was probably Balrog cat. Yep, Balrog, of course, good style. Which, again, I would not have expected. I, I would have thought that would be a good content image. 
So that's kind of why I asked the kids because I like I would not have thought to use that as the style. Did Did you and the kids like figure out some things that made it a good good subject or a good style? Uh, we kind of talked about it. It was it's it's hard to to get them. They were just like, show us the next one, show us the next one. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe this is why this is happening. They're like, yeah, but just show us more photos. <laughs> so was, I tried a little bit, um, but it was, yeah, I like to go through fast, kind of like a weird Hello? movie of my cat. There's this one image. This uh -huh. was a particularly bad style. And it was a picture of some gold bars. I'll pull it up. So if we just send you images, will you like forever generate them in whatever style we have for? Sure, yeah. <laughs> I've got it set up where it's really easy. For a small fee? Yeah, there you go. Okay, here's the gold bars. This image was a, it made a lot of things look real weird. I guess it would have been another interesting section to add to the presentation of like bad styles. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it takes a lot of time to go through these 20,000 images, so. I focus on finding good looking things at first. Yeah, let me see the total that I counted though. Do you know about that, um, that online project where they run neural networks that generate art and then they have people go in and rank how much they like the art and the neural Oh, network... like doll E, right? Or it's a different one I'm thinking of, but basically it, it, it learns from what people like, which images are good. So I guess you could train it, right? To select the images for you. Mm -hmm that are most, most pleasing. So it looks like I generated 20,691 images total before counting the videos, because the videos is like a couple thousand extra um, that are in a separate folder. But like we could, we could just go to this results file and then it takes a second to load because there's 20,000 of them. And then we, we can just scroll down that and pick a random one and see what luck we get, our one in 20,000 chance of it being good. All right, oh, SpongeBob at the New York skyline. <laughs> that would sound Kinda interesting. Let's pick another random ones too. All right, brown dog as laptop. Yeah, see that didn't. I think that's also wrong. I just feel like it didn't, it didn't actually do much to the photo, probably. Let's see, brown dog. There's the original. Whoops. I mean, it turned it into kind of a, you know, a watercolor. That's true. Yeah, I guess if you want a watercolor version of your dog, I could I could do that for you. <laughs> I just think the the fiery one was the best. The uh, The Balrog was just consistently one of the coolest. Like the that one. I just any of the flaming animals. I thought was funny. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. That's that's cool. basically. So if, yeah, if anybody else any questions, I'll be happy to try and answer them. So I was trying to understand how the so this transfer network. Is it does it work with a generative adversarial network? Uh no. It's that's why I said it's this weird, like not normal type of machine learning where it's not quite like a uh typical thing. Uh you can use generative adversarial networks and those are really fast. Um like I, I was reading this one paper where they they can upfront train a, a network on a single style. And it takes like some number of hours, but then they can transfer that style onto an image in like 10 milliseconds. So then they could almost make video in real time, kind of if it was 100 frames per second. I guess, yeah, 100 frames per second. You could theoretically convert that into video in real time, which is kind of cool. Um, I see. But like I said, that's a single style and it's upfront training time. Whereas what I was going for here is I just wanted to just generate all kinds of novel combinations to find cool styles. And now maybe what I'll do is I'll go and I'll train one of those networks on the Balrog style and then see what happens or something like that. Because yeah, this idea, this project was more about just a vast exploration as opposed to uh, trying to push boundaries or use more modern techniques to be faster.
I, I keep wondering if it's like just doing a convolution on that formula yeah. you showed us. Is that what's happening? Okay, it's doing a convolution Basically, yeah. over and yeah. over. Yeah, it takes, it's just using the convoluted layers of the VGG19 and then it like applies those to the image and then it does that a thousand times. Got it, cool. So yeah, it's basically just convoluting it into the other image. I guess you well, can do all kinds of things, right? You could do this for music, you could do it for, right? You could you could take a, a tune and then have it, the, have it, you know, in the style of Beethoven or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if you can, yeah, because you can just convert music into images using like a, a waveform and then just, yeah, you should be able to do the same kind of thing.